Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Autumn Morning Web, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Pinot Noir, so let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so what I'm gonna be using for materials today, I have a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors are Mars Black, Violet Purple, Green Oxide, Burnt Umber, which I'll call brown. Burnt Sienna, which I'll call rust. I have a deep yellow and titanium white. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round brush and I have a number one round brush. And throughout the painting process, I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large. Of course, you can switch those up a little bit if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I am gonna provide you with a couple of additional resources that you can find down below this video in the description. What you're gonna find there is you're gonna find a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the paint and the brushes and all that good stuff. And then there's a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions for you down there as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting the first layer of our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are white, yellow, rust, brown, and black. So I said them in that order um, from light to dark because that's kind of how I'm gonna initially approach it. Um, I'm gonna start with my lightest area kind of to the left and a little bit higher than my center. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of work my way to the dark. This is intended to be either a early morning misty kind of sky or maybe a late summer sunset. You can kind of decide what is visually um, in your thoughts as you're painting it, but that's how I'm gonna approach it. It's gonna be a very out of focus sun and then just a nice warm, nice golden sky. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with some white paint on my large brush and I'm just gonna kind of put it a large area of it in through this kind of left top area. And I want my um, sky to be really, you know, have a lot of, of golden colors, I guess, as for lack of a better terminology. Um, but I do know that I'm gonna be doing two layers, so I'm not terribly concerned about it being perfect on this layer. I went from white, I'm picking up um, yellow and white right now just to kind of get around where that um, sun is. And I am kind of blending them in together, um, but I'm not making it one solid color. And again, I know I'm gonna be doing a second layer on this. I am using predominantly a left to right brush stroke, almost like a crisscross um, kind of brush stroke, but I'm not pushing hard, so that way it can kind of blend in nice and naturally with the colors that it's next to. So once I've got this really, you know, center focal point. I'm gonna bring some of this yellow and white down here a little bit because I want this area to be lighter as well, going down through my um, cornfield path, I guess we're gonna call it. Um, so bringing that color in down through there. Now I'm gonna be picking up yellow and rust, and this is gonna start to transition into the darker colors on the sides of the sun. Um, so just kind of 
getting it to blend in with this center area in through here. And yours doesn't have to be totally blended at this point. Again, we're gonna be doing that second layer. Um, and this could be clouds going by, it could be fog, it could be mist, it could be anything that you imagine it to be. So don't be terribly concerned if you know, you put a cloud going in front of your your sun. You can really just kind of um, build this sky as you want to, or just let it build itself. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily, you don't necessarily have to dictate every single little piece that goes into it. You can certainly, you know, make it have as much uh, drama or colors as you want it to. I'm bringing some of that rust and yellow down towards the um, bottom area now and again I'm just kind of overlapping it into some of this yellow area so it looks nice and natural and once I've got some enough of this yellow and rust on here then I'll start transitioning into rust and brown and then I will finish it off down at the bottom right hand corner with some a little bit of black so my goal is to kind of get this center area the lightest and then the these exterior edges have more of the rust and the yellow I am going to put a little bit of brown up at the top um, just because I feel like there might be a, a dark kind of cloudy thing maybe floating by. So I put a little bit of brown on my brush just to get myself a little bit of darkness up at the top just to make sure I have the mood set properly. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of rust now just to get it to transition into the other colors next to it. And again, I know that this isn't going to look perfect right now. It's going to have all of these little brush marks in it. I even have a whole bunch of what I refer to as cut marks where my brush stops. I'm not concerned about that right now because I know that I'm gonna be doing a second layer. I just picked up a little bit of white just to get this top part to transition a little bit. But I know that I'm gonna be doing a second layer on top of this and that second layer is going to eliminate all of those little brush marks that we see. Um, I love doing these type of skies or um, backgrounds with multiple layers um, because it provides me with a lot of control as to what's gonna happen. Um, plus it looks more natural to me when you have layers upon layers. Right now I'm picking up brown and rust just to make sure that I'm traveling into the darker area down below. And then when I, I'm gonna paint the entire bottom area with this um, brown and rust. And then in the bottom right hand corner, that's where I will add a little bit of black. I don't want it to go totally black. So that's why I'm um, gonna do it on top of the rust and the brown. But I do want this bottom right corner to be a little bit darker just to um, kind of tell the story of the big corn stalks that we're gonna be putting into place. So it's gonna, provide some more dimensional elements. So I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up a little bit of black and I'm just putting a little bit down in this corner. Nothing too um, ex exaggerated or too powerful. Just a little bit to add that bit of darkness. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So when you get this first layer of your sky on, you can wash and dry that large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're doing the same as we did for the last step. <laughs> we're doing the second layer of our sky. Um, we're gonna be using the large brush and we're in essence gonna be doing the same thing that we just did, only the second layer of it. Um, but as you're doing it, you don't have to be terribly concerned about, oh my God, I put rust here, so I've gotta put rust there the second time. You can certainly overlap colors. Um, and I'll show you how to in a second. But I do want to caution you or forewarn you that you want to make sure that your canvas is dry before you go on to this step. Um, so you can either, you know, take a little bit extra of a long break or you could sit here and blow on it <laughs> or you could just take out a blow dryer and blow dry it. So however you want to get it dry, but um, you do want it dry. And the reason why you want it dry is be because if you're going right on top of it with a second layer of wet paint and it's not dry, what's going to happen is you're going to start pulling your paint right off of your canvas. So if you don't want that to happen, make sure your first layer is dry. Um, and how I'm going to do this, again, I'm going to do it in the same kind of 
order that I did the first time. I start with my white on my brush and I know that a lot of acrylic paint, even the best of the acrylic paint can still be a little bit, bit see-through, which is why I love to do these multiple layers. Um, and I love to utilize the, um, the layers to add really natural dimension to it um, because I know that there's layers in the atmosphere and there's layers in clouds and there's layers in our skin and everything in this world. So to me, when you paint in layers, that's going to make it look all the more natural. And I'm concentrating a little bit more on getting it to blend this time. Um, so I avoid any areas that I don't want to see brush marks. So you can certainly do the same, just go a little bit slower. Um, you can use a little bit more paint if you need to, just to kind of get it on there. Um, sometimes the less paint you use though, the faster it will dry and the more control you'll have over the colors that you want. Um, so the thinner the layer, the more you'll be able to control it. So just know that um, if you come in with big globs of paint, it might be a little bit more difficult for you to shift it and change it if you want it to be. Um, so again, I'm just kind of meandering around the canvas at this point. You don't necessarily have to go in the same order you did on that first layer. That was definitely more um, of a purposeful planning on my part because it's easier on that first layer to make sure that you, you know, keep your, your brush in the, in the cleanliness zone that you wanted to. I'm a very lazy brush washer. Um, so I didn't, I did it in that order. So we didn't taint that light color in the middle. But as we're going on to this second layer, you can certainly intermingle these colors and you can have more rust in some areas. Um, but if you find yourself at any time where you're having difficulty blending your paint or controlling the colors, it might mean that you have too much paint on your brush and it, or it could mean that you're you're overloaded with too many colors on your brush. So you can always wash it and dry it at any time. So if you find yourself having any kind of difficulty getting through the second layer, um, or you could just let it dry for a couple of minutes and come back to a particular section. So just know that it's all right if you know it doesn't come out exactly like mine. It's all right if it doesn't blend perfectly. Most of this is gonna be hidden by some big, huge corn stalks anyways. <laughs> so don't feel the pressure to you know, make it look every bit perfect in every single area. Um, I think the primary focus that if you do want to concentrate on any area being the as best as you want it to be is that kind of center area where we're going to have um, our little spider web and stuff presenting itself in a little while. So I'm just kind of cruising along, but you can tell I am going a little bit slower on this um, second time around because I'm concentrating a little bit more and getting it to blend and do exactly everything that I want it to do. Um, so it takes me just a little bit longer, um, but when you got it, you got it, you know, and I don't overwork it. I just kind of make sure that I've got everywhere blended that I want to. You could have, you know, you could even use like a more of a a circular brush stroke to get the, it to look a little bit more misty, like there's, you know, soft layers of the mist just kind of floating by. This is meant to be, you know, a autumn harvesty kind of sky, so it can be as yellow or as orange or as rusty as you imagine it to be. Um, so there is really no, um, you know, no limitations as to the color intensity that you may want it to have. So just have fun with it. Get it to go in whatever direction that you want. I just again am kind of concentrating on having a lighter area in through this um, semi-center area and I'm concentrating on making sure that everything looks like it blends together, um, that it's working together and it's misty enough or foggy enough for that those morning harvest pickings that might happen. Um, 
I used to go blueberry picking. That was my harvesting when I was when I was a, a younger person. Um, and I remember those mornings. It was just that that morning heat fog was just lifting right off the ground. It was really pretty cool. So I never went corn corn. I don't know if it's called corn picking, corn harvesting. What do they do? They have machines that take that get the corn out of the fields. But I have I have been through many a corn maze in my life, so I do know that at the tail end of the of the harvest season, whatever doesn't get picked in their crops, they just kind of let you know some some farmers just let them kind of die amongst the other corn husks, and a lot of them do. And where I live, we have tons of corn mazes. And so you go pumpkin picking and you go, you know, traveling through these great mazes and it's just a whole bunch of fun. So now that I have my sky done, I think I'm going to just darken up this bottom right corner a little bit more, add a teeny tiny bit of black. We are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and painted in, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our corn stalks. So we're gonna be using our large bristle brush, and again, you're gonna to wanna to dry your canvas in between this step, or before you start this step. So just make sure that you, that you give it a nice dry. Um, and what we're gonna be doing is we're making what I'm gonna call kind of the out of focus um, corn that is set behind the, the ones that are gonna be in focus that we'll be painting later. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use this brush. I'm gonna be using brown, rust, and purple. Um, and what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be kind of just really loosely, almost with a, like a dry brush. I don't wanna use a lot of paint. I'll be um, just putting in these faint marks that are gonna look like they're out of focus behind the, the real stuff. So. I do want to keep a little alleyway in through here as if there's a, you know, as if there's a corn row on this side and a corn row on this side. I want this one to be bigger and this one to be smaller. So I'm going to have less space on the left and more on the right. So I'm going to load my brush with a little bit of purple, brown, and rust all at the same time. I don't wash my brush and every time I go to reload my brush, I'm not even thinking about what of what one of those three colors I'm using. Maybe one time I pick up more rust, maybe not the next time I pick up more purple. You'll feel your, you'll get your groove um, and however much you wanna use is totally fine. So this is a flat brush and I'm going to be using the slender side of it most of the time. I'm not gonna have it flat like this um, and have a real wide line, I'm gonna have it I'm gonna be using it on the side so I have thinner lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of give myself a little bit of a road map so I don't lose myself and get out of control, which I have a tendency to do. So I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna start um, from the left-hand bottom corner. I'm gonna come in, I would say, about uh, almost a quarter of the way, probably about a quarter of the way into the canvas. And I'm just gonna kind of make myself just a, a little kind of broken line coming up a, a little ways. And then I'm gonna come over a little bit, maybe two or three inches to the right of that and do the same thing, only now maybe I come up a little bit higher. And I'm not having a firm line, this is just something that's gonna give me some guidance. And then on the left-hand side, I know that I want some of these to be really tall, probably up in this vicinity, so I'm just gonna kind of make myself a little mark. And then on the right-hand side, I want them to go all the way up to the canvas, to the top of the canvas. So that gives me a visual, I'm, come, I'm starting here and I wanna end up there. But I don't want it to be a perfectly straight line, so I'm gonna just kind of sit here and I'm gonna make, I'm almost just rubbing my brush onto my canvas. Think of these as just, uh, you know, long pieces of grass. You can kind of rub them into your canvas. This is just making it look like it's out of focus, like you've got something behind um, the actual corn stalks that we're going to be putting on here. I reloaded my brush and I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. And 
It doesn't matter how um, dark or how light this is. It's just meant to look like it's it's adding something to your dimensional element. Um, I do want to have some unevenness, especially as it kind of tips into um, that sun. So as you're doing it, you want to kind of shift the direction of your brush stroke. So maybe you have a couple that almost fall over and are leaning into your um, center highlighted area. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be um, systematic. You really just are going for some kind of messy, out of focus um, activity behind the big um, real ones that we're going to be putting on in a minute. And then once you've got this step all nice and accomplished, and I'm going all the way down to the bottom of my canvas, and some of these are might be lighter on top of um, that first layer that we put on there. Awesome. It's still going to make it look, you know, like it's got some dimension to it. And the purple helps to um, make it look like more realistic shadowy type uh, areas. It's bringing a little bit of a cool tone into into your paint colors. And then I just want to make sure that I've got enough in here. I think I'm going to put just a touch more in this little area right into here. And then we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and on here. You've got your out of focus. I like this step. Uh, you've got your out of focus little activity here. You can put this large brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing our second layer of our corn stalks. So this in essence is gonna be, we're starting, we're gonna bring them a little bit more in focus. I'm using my medium brush and I'm going to use um, the same. I'm, I'm going to use brown and purple, um, but no rust on this step. And what I'm going to also do is I'm going to be putting in place um, up at the top. There's different types of corn stalks, but the the type of corn that I'm doing up at the top of it, it has these like long stringy pieces that end up being fluffy, but we're going to start them with the long stringy piece to it. So I'm using brown and purple. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm in essence doing the same thing that I just did, but not on every single piece. Um, so this is going to be more in, let me just add a little bit more brown so you can see it. These are going to be um, skinnier. They'll be more in focus. They're going to have less, um, uh, soft edges to them and I'm making these little kind of singular pieces that are going to be coming out of what's going to be more of a solid um, piece to the um, to the cornstalk. So again I'm just using purple and brown at this point. Um, you can create a solid piece if you want to and then you can have the little um, the little pieces that shoot out the top. You can make them, you know, as many as you want. You can have as much fun as you want with it. I'm not doing a ton um, because there's going to be so much other activity on the um, on the canvas, but I am going to bring some more of these solid pieces, the brown and the purple, down into um, the rest of that particular area and you don't have to be super straight with it mine are really kind of I put a little bit of a curve to them you don't have to see every stalk of corn um, throughout this we are good we have one more um, kind of in focus layer that we're going to be doing to bring um, the silhouetted parts through and those will be where you'll be able to see um, more kind of detailed aspects of it but these little fl fluffy things at the top I'm really not doing a ton I just really want there to be a couple here and there I'll do a couple on this side maybe this one's gonna have it up and through here and just kind of leaning over the edge here so I'm not pressing hard when I do this and you can um, really have them in a non-systematic way 
Um, if they all look exactly the same, like you have four on here and four on here and four on here, then it looks kind of manufactured. So we want it to really read as something that Mother Nature has created and not, not our hand. Um, so that's why I do kind of just, I, I don't really think about it too hard. I just am kind of adding little ones here and there and then maybe I've got a couple of the longer stalks coming down here. Maybe I've got a couple of little stray pieces that are gonna work their way into this little alley. And again, I'm not pressing hard. If you um, are finding your lines are too thick for you, you could certainly switch to your smaller brush to get these little tiny pieces to kind of make their way out into here, but it's totally up to you. And then we are gonna be using this same, actually no, Let's. we're gonna switch brushes to our big brush. So once you've got enough of these little pieces just kind of hanging over the edges here and kind of poking their way out of the main stocks, you can um, wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're, excuse my ignorance for not knowing the name of this, we're putting the fluffy stuff at the top of our cord stocks. So I'm using my big brush. Um, so I know it's like these little silky things at the top, um, but I am, I do not know the correct name of them. I'm sure somebody will fact check me and totally let me know, but um, I'm gonna just call them the fluffy things for now. Fluffy stuff. So what we're doing is I'm gonna be using my big brush. I'm gonna be using brown and a little bit of purple. And again, I don't need it to be, I'm hardly using any paint on my brush whatsoever. And really what I'm doing is I'm just gonna kind of extend a couple of these, um, the little ones that I made in focus earlier. I'm gonna extend those with this fluffy stuff on the edge of it, and you don't have to do every single one of them. So I'm not gonna press hard, and I'm just gonna kind of make myself some little, some little dots coming out. Um, and again, I wanna make it so it's not consistent. Um, maybe I've got one coming in through here, and again, I'm, I'm not gonna do much here. I'm just kind of adding these little these little fluffy things. And if yours is too dark, feel free to, you know, back off on, on one of those colors or maybe you add a little bit more rust into it. We will be putting a highlight on it later. Um, so just know that if it's, if it's looking a little bit too um, vibrant for you right now or too dark, it's okay because we're going to be adding um, some additional detail to it later. So right now I'm just kind of adding those onto there. I think that, oh, maybe I'll add a little, a little one here in the, in the alleyway, maybe a couple little silhouetted ones skirting up in through here. And again, we've got so much other stuff that's gonna be happening here, so if yours doesn't look exactly like mine or have the same exact detail, no worries. And then we're gonna be switching to our tiny brush for the next step. So once you've got your fluffy things on, put your large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing our first layer for our spider web. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are brown and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna water down the paint. Um, the reason why I want it watered down is so I can really have a nice thin line like, um, like an ink consistency is how I want it to be so I can really just have a nice, a nice thin line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm just gonna add a drop of water into my black paint and I'll bring some brown paint over near my black paint so I can kind of scoop them up at the same time. And it doesn't have to be um, any particular blackness or brownness. I'm using both colors so I have a variety of shades in through there. So I've got it nice and watered down. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a few dots and then I'm gonna connect those dots. Your spider web can totally look different than mine. It can have different shape than mine. Um, I want mine to be that spider web that you stumble across first thing in the morning when you're walking through a cornfield. <laughs> so mine's gonna be pretty darn huge. It's crossing over from one row to the next and it's gonna be the one that if you do stumble upon, you're gonna probably walk the other way. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a whole bunch of dots here. Um, and don't worry if your dots really connect to anything right yet because we're gonna be adding the um, really in focus corn stalks after we do um, this particular layer. So you can put um, leaves and stalks and stuff where you need to if you don't connect it to something. So I'm gonna put my first dot somewhere up in through this vicinity, so maybe about four or five inches from the top and maybe about four inches from the edge. I'm gonna put, my next one is gonna come down somewhere in this vicinity, so this is about halfway up and maybe a little bit to the right. Got one way down here, so somewhere in this vicinity. And then I, let's see, I got one over here, so way up, you know, maybe a third of the way down your canvas, maybe a couple of inches in towards your, um, towards your sun. And then I got another one in through here. So this is going to be maybe up and over to the right a little bit. Um, and then maybe I'll put another one somewhere in this vicinity because I don't want mine to be super, um, I, I want it to really look realistic. Like this spider just like jumped onto whatever it could reach next and I don't want it to really look too um, too formulaic, I guess. So I'm gonna connect my dots now um, and I don't wanna connect them with straight lines. I wanna connect them with kind of a little bit of an arcing line. And again, if it doesn't work out perfect, no worries. You can certainly, like I said, water down your paint a little bit. I've got this long one in through here is gonna connect to this one over here. And again, having the little bit of water in your paint is really gonna help to um, allow you to make these more slender lines. Um, I'm not pressing hard. I'm just really kind of letting my brush do what it wants. I'm using the little corner of my brush. I am having these have a little bit of an arc to them. Uh, this one's gonna come over here not sure how that one got there, but we'll just put it there anyways. And then I'm gonna connect this one to this one. And then once you've got your exterior um, all nice and kind of planned out, oh, that one landed right on a branch. Um, now you've gotta put where your nucleus is. So where's your little spider gonna live and where did all of these little webs come out of? So I'm gonna put mine somewhere in this vicinity. You could certainly put yours wherever you want. It's gonna work out no matter where you put it. So once you figure out where you wanna put yours, now you're gonna be connecting that center dot to every one of these points. Um, and again, I'm gonna be using a little bit of an arcing line, but I wanna kind of really make this kind of look um, realistic. So instead of having this one connect to here, I'm actually gonna have a little broken line like this comes over in through there. So make myself a little extra, and then this will kind of connect in through there. So I just made myself an, an extra little fun piece. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this from this center dot and I'm going to connect it to each one of these points. This is how I'm gonna start um, forming my web. And again, I'm kind of arcing my line a little bit. Uh, you don't have to arc it a lot, but a little bit is gonna make it look like there's a little bit more movement to it. Um, as I get over on this side, I guess this would kind of arc down in this direction. And don't worry if any of your lines are too thick. You'll be able to, we're gonna be adding the morning dew drops onto it later, and that will help you to um, make any lines less invasive or less um, strong, if, for, lack of a better, for lack of a better word here. I'm just watering down my paint just a little bit more. And you could, you know, um, I don't have a sturdy hand, so, 
Usually when I'm trying to do small lines, I will brace myself, but this is a really large object I'm trying to paint right now. So my lines are going to be wobbly. Yours may be wobbly. It's all, it's okay. We're going to, we're going to hide it with all kinds of other stuff. This little weird spot in through here, I'm just going to kind of freeform a couple of um, little spider lines that are going to go in there, little web lines. And then I need more um, between here. So I'm just going to strategically put, pick a couple of spots um, to make it hit um, from the center. I'm just going to maybe do one there and one there. And again, you can have as many as you want or as few as you want. It's totally up to you. I'm sure nobody's going to sit here. I, I, I don't think there are two spider webs alike in this world. So you can certainly freeform yours into whatever whatever kind of little spider web you would like it to be. I think I'm just gonna put maybe one in between these two and then maybe one in between these two. And then once you've got that, now you have to make all the little connector pieces. So for me, um, from the spider web research that I did before I did this painting, the arc of the little pieces that come out of here go away from the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start from, you can really start wherever you want. I'm going to start in the center and I'm just going to make this slight arc and I'm just going to keep going until I have one section done. And then once I have that section, I'm just moving on to the next section. <laughs> and I'm going to start each one at the same spot um, as I did on the first row. But I'm giving them each their own little bit of an arc. So that way um, it looks to me, a, you know, a little realistic to what I, I've seen on my spider web research. And this is one of those steps that you could fly through. Maybe you take, you know, 12 hours to make yours look as authentic as you want. It's totally up to you how carefree and loose you want this or how um, perfect you want it. Sometimes your, your personality will dictate how perfect you need a step like this to be. Um, but in my paint, my little, my little painting world, I just kind of really uh, like to have fun and enjoy the process. So I don't tend to get too hung up when we're doing these quick paintings on these little details. So I'm just going to kind of let happen what wants to happen. But I am kind of going from one mark on, you know, one section to the next. Um, and then that way, hopefully by the time I get around, they'll um, possibly meet each other. And if not, I'm okay with that. <laughs> and you just have fun as you go through this process. And maybe you can imagine whatever kind of spider made this particular web. And I don't, the only kind of spider I know is the Black Widow. I don't know, I don't know names of other spiders. Maybe there's, a, oh, a Daddy Long Leg. That's a spider. But I don't think they make these kind of webs. They make... I don't know if they what kind of webs daddy long legs make, but I think they're fun animals. They're not animals, insects. Um, but you can, I don't know, maybe this is, maybe this is a poisonous spider. Maybe it's a friendly spider. You could have, you know, maybe it's going to catch, you know, all of its little bugs or its food in this little trap that it's making. Who knows? You can imagine it to be whatever you want it to be. And then I just got a couple more sections to go. And when you get to um, like this section up here, maybe you don't want these um, symmetrical kind of lines up and through there. So just kind of use whatever your intuition is telling you to do. And then um, we are going to be, we're gonna switch brushes after this step, we'll be using our medium brush. How am I going to tackle this? These last couple sections where they meet one another, it's, it gets a little confusing, but I'm just going to try it. I'm going to wing it here and see if I can get them to almost meet each other. And if they don't, again, I'm so okay with that. They, we, we, can, we can improvise when it gets to the little um, corners and stuff. 
if we're, we're if we're off in our numbers because they just you know they've got to connect somehow I know it's some kind of little silk that they is that what it is it's silk that the spiders web made of hmm. I don't know I, don't, I think it is I think it's some kind of silk and it's very strong I think that they I heard I don't know if I heard but um, I think they use some kind of spider webs to make the t the um, strong material that's used for firefighters um, for the firefighter hoses or the firefighter uniforms for protecting against fire I could be making this up but I think I heard that somewhere that it's like this uber strong um, substance that spider web material is made of um, so that's a fun fact that I suppose you could look up and see if I'm accurate fluffy stuff but I watch a lot of weird TV sometimes and sometimes these facts they stick in my head and I don't know if they're accurate or not <laughs> and I just spew them out as if I know what I'm talking about but sometimes I don't know um, all right so here we go I'm just kind of seeing if I can meet some of these to each other and some of them are meeting some of them are not so we're just gonna kind of let happen what's gonna happen and then again we're gonna switch brushes to our uh, medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the in-focus stalks of corn. <laughs> so I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using black, brown, and purple. Um, and I say in-focus, but really, if you can think of these more as they're the closest ones to us, and they're probably the most in the silhouette because the sun is way over there so they're going to be the darkest so that's why we're using black with them we're going to put highlights on them later but this is just kind of putting them in place so i'm going to use black brown and purple on my brush at all times and i want some of these to be pretty tall and then some to be pretty short and on both sides but i do not want to lose all of this soft out of focus stuff that i have on the exterior top and this little exterior interior part so as I'm doing this I am mindful like I want to hide my edges not fully but if I have a big polka dot like that I definitely want to hide that um, but otherwise I'm just gonna be kind of carefree as I'm doing this I'm gonna have long like thick they look like pieces of grass and then um, little leaves coming off the sides but you don't have to um, think I need to make every single individual leaf. So I'll show you how to just kind of do a carefree essence of these leaves. And then later when we're um, putting a highlight on them, that will bring them in even more into focus. So again, I have black, brown, and um, purple on my brush. And I don't need 9,000 of these. I'm just going to kind of say, all right, maybe I want one in through here. And then maybe I reload my brush often. I definitely want to hide that thing in through there. Maybe I've got one that's going to come in through here. And you can bring them down to the bottom of your canvas. Um, they don't have to be super straight. You can see mine are a little crooked kind of. Maybe I've got one coming in through here. And then once I've kind of got them there, now I'm super carefree with my leaves and maybe I've got other stalks in intermingled in different heights. So my leaves are gonna be, in essence, you don't want them all the way up to the top because the ear of the corn doesn't go all the way up to the top, but you can have a couple of like little loose ones, um, but you don't need these big, huge ones up at the top. So what I'm gonna do is you can kind of, you push your brush a little bit harder and then you release it and it's gonna give it a little bit kind of of a point. That's the standard look. You can, you know, make a whole bunch like that, um, but I know for me, as I'm painting, I don't want them to all look standard. So I'm just gonna kind of free form and just really um, use my brush in that brush stroke where I feel myself 
pushing and releasing and maybe I've got one that is coming off the side of my canvas. Maybe there's a, a stalk over that we can't see that's creating something in through here. Um, so just have fun with it. Once you've got that brush stroke in, in your arsenal and you can just start kind of cruising along, I'm really, as I'm doing it, like I said, I'm, I'm pushing and then as I get to the tip, I just kind of release it and it can have a little bend. It can go up straight. You know, you can push it and pull it. Um, you can have ones that are going to overlap each other. Maybe I've got a little stalk in through here that's just kind of overlapping or down at the bottom. My, my leaves are bigger because they're closer to me. Um, so really just, just have fun with it. You can have it overlap the edge of your, um, your little spider web a bit if you want to. And then if you feel like this is too much, like I don't feel that's um, a good transition into there, I'm gonna add some smaller ones or shorter ones down at the bottom here just so it looks nice and natural. That looks pretty full to me, I'm digging that. I know I'm gonna have some um, ears of corn in here in a, in a minute, so I don't need to go too much more than that. So I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side. I'm gonna do the same thing. Maybe I've got one coming off this side over here. And again, this side, I don't, this side I don't need it to be as full as that side or have as much to it because it's just a little piece of it. Um, but I do want it to emulate um, the actual corn stalk with some little leaves coming off of it. So I do want to hold true to my brush stroke and make sure that I've kind of represented that brush stroke a little bit, especially um, through the bottom area where it's thicker to me. Um, and then we are gonna switch back. Oh no, actually, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this in place and you feel like you've got a nice assembly, make sure you've um, got it pretty thick down at the bottom. Um, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of the ears of our corn. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using brown and white. You will probably be going through some wet paint on your canvas. It's okay. I've intended for us to do that. Um, so that way it just kind of blends in and it's just a real, murky kind of dirty color that we're gonna use as the base coat for our ears of corn. So I'm gonna put brown and white on my medium brush and I'm gonna put an ear of corn wherever I feel that an ear of corn looks like it should go. <laughs> and I want you to not worry about the surrounding leaves of the ear of corn right now because as soon as we put this base on, we're gonna go right back and put some leaves right around it. So don't worry um, if you haven't put it in a, a spot that it totally looks like it belongs right now, um, nestled in some leaves, cause we're gonna, we'll do that on the next step. So I feel like I want one or two over on this side. So I think I'm gonna put one in somewhere in through here and you don't have to put the whole ear on. Maybe just a little piece of it is poking out. Um, again, I'm just using brown and white. Maybe I've got a little one over here. So some of them are gonna end up being darker than others. Some of them are gonna be lighter than others. Don't worry about it. Put them in different directions. Put them, make them different sizes from one another. These ones at the bottom uh, and over here would typically, from our point of view, would be bigger because we're, seemingly closer to these ones. Um, oh, I have to put a leaf there too. But anyways, so I think I'm gonna have maybe one coming off the side in through here. And you, I'm sh sure you're familiar with the shape of corn, how it gets a little bit pointier at the edge. Um, I think I'm gonna have a really big one coming out here. And again, I can go right in front of a leaf. I'm not concerned with that right now. I'm gonna be um, adding more of that detail in a minute. Maybe I've got a little one poking out over in this area. Maybe I'll just put one right in through here. And again, I'm more concerned about where do I want the color of these corn um, stock or the um, 
ears of corn as opposed to am I perfectly placing it around a um, around a leaf right now and then maybe I'll have one let's put one up in through here maybe this one's a pretty pretty big one maybe this one goes off of our canvas a little bit that'll be fun something like that and then maybe I've maybe I've got one up in through here and again oh you uh, another fun fact there's usually only one or two ears of corn on a single stock. So you don't want to have 65 going up one stock if you want to keep the authenticity of it. Um, but as I always say, do whatever you want in painting. But I think that's kind of a good um, amount. Um, I'm thinking if I want to put another one, and I don't think so. I like that. Um, that assortment so I'm gonna wash and dry this medium brush in preparation for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step we're using that medium brush and now we're gonna put the leaves around the um, ears of corn so I'm gonna use the same colors that I did on the first time on the first go around which is my black purple and brown and I'm just gonna put those three colors on my brush Oops, I have a little yellow on my brush. You, you guys might not have noticed that, but I would have noticed it. So um, I'm just going to kind of start from here, and you can put them just going in the front of your um, ear of corn, or you can strategically place a couple in the back of it. So feel free to, you know, have as much fun with this as you want. Um, but they, you're going to need something at the base of them um so just have fun with however many leaves you want maybe like i've got an extra big one in through here and if you you know pull it up the bottom of that ear of corn if you need to if it's not looking natural enough just pull up the leaf um in front of the bottom of it a little bit and maybe this one is going to go in front of that one and just have fun with it. This is where you're just, you're building um, the design of your ears of corn right now. And you can put a couple in the back and you'll be able to see yours a little bit better than mine as far as the um, brightness or darkness of it. Um, I know it's tough in the video to kind of see dark on dark, but I definitely want this dark base to it so I can have some nice highlights. And plus I want it to stay in the shadows. Um, so I've got this one up here that I'm just really kind of accentuating kind of what I've already got on this one because this one was pretty, pretty well placed. Um, I did see this earlier. So I'm going to just kind of get a little bit of something happening down there. And then did I hit them all? Oh, I didn't hit. I don't know if I hit this one or not, but it looks like it needs a little more help here. So let me just grab this one in through here point that a little bit more, maybe put a little bit behind it. And then we're gonna switch brushes to our tiny brush for the next step. So once you've got your leaves around your ears of corn, you can put the medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding our dew to our um, spider web. So let's do some do right now. <laughs> so I'm going to use my small brush. I'm primarily going to be using white paint, but there may come a point where if I feel I put too much white, I can always bring back some of the brown or the black if I need to. So my um, trick here is if I want a small um, dot, which is going to represent the do, and I'm going to take my brush and I like to spin it in the side of my on the side of my palette in my paint that gets my brush really nice and pointy um, but I do I do do sorry, I'm gonna say do a lot in this step I do do um, uh, use a lot of paint on the brush on that tippy tip because that's gonna give me a nice um, really quick representational dot. I don't want them all to be the same exact size. I don't want them to all be, I don't want each one of these rows to have five dew drops on each one. I really want it to look like mother nature has left its mark on, on this and I don't want it to look systematic. So as I go through this step, um, I do have a shaky hand. So that 
bodes very well when I'm trying to do inconsistencies. Um, but what I really want to do is try and get the majority of these dew spots on the side that is closest to the sun. So when I'm working down here, my little dew drops are going to be on the top side of each one of these lines. When I'm working on this side of the um, spider web, my dew drops are going to be on the side that's closest to the sun, so on the bottom side. So you can have fun with it. That's my thought process as I go through it. Um, and I'm taking my brush and I just am kind of like skipping it along. And it does not, again, have to be on every single little piece of the web. You can have it wherever you want it to be. And this is one of those steps it might take you a super duper long time to do or you might just get into your groove and into your rhythm and just kind of put you know go way faster than me um, you can have them on these edge or the the supporting pieces or you can have well actually these would be the supporting pieces you can have them on any pieces you want <laughs> um, but I was, I was gonna say you can have them on going down these little side pieces if you wanted to they don't just have to be a drop. You could make them into maybe a little dash if you wanted, like maybe a couple of the dots have connected together. Um, but again, the um, idea here or the goal is to just make them look like little water droplets and they, they would be inconsistent. And if you have little um, thicker spots that you don't dig of your brown that you want to disguise put a little dew drop there and then I'm just going to kind of keep going until I have as many as I want and you can see I'm kind of hopping around because I don't want it to be um, really you know consistent so I'm going to just kind of maybe put a couple down here maybe maybe the water has already dried off of some of the areas um, and because I skip around and I don't allow myself to stay in one spot, that's going to make it more realistic looking. Um, and I'm going to put some in the middle. Maybe the spider has gone out for his morning meal and he's, he's not in his web right now. But I, I kind of want to um, put quite a bit in that center because I feel like it would probably accumulate these little drops would accumulate in that center. And again, I'm kind of strategically putting it um, in areas that are, I feel like my brown line or my web lines were a little bit too clunky. So you could certainly do the same. It really helps to um, help with any anything like that that you might want to disguise or you know improvise on. And I'm just gonna kind of keep going. And now as I'm working over towards this other side of the web, I'm trying to keep my dew drops on the side of the sun. So wherever that side of the sun is, and for me it's in this vicinity, it's still hiding behind all of those um, misty morning. I see, I'm, I'm thinking in my head this is definitely morning time, and it's probably where the dew drops are coming into play. So I guess I've totally, I've totally steered this from after evening sunset to morning do morning sunrise in the in the autumn you know harvest time of our year you might not I don't know where you, where you're watching me from but I live in New England in the United States and we have this beautiful autumn time of the year where all of our tree leaves are turning colors and we have harvesting of the pumpkins and the apples and the the corn so it's just a super cool time of the year followed by some really cold snow <laughs> which I don't look forward to all that much I am a little bit more this year but um, the typically I am not a cold weather person so that's where I like to travel and escape our cold winter months but this year due to our worldwide pandemic I am probably going to be hunkering down in my little winter cabin having a lot of fires and painting a lot so maybe we'll get some extra extra painting tutorials this winter 
um, and then you just keep going and you put as many dew drops on here as you want and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got all of your dew drops on here you can wash and dry this brush and you can get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting the silk that comes out of the top of the ear of the corn. <laughs> so I'm going to be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, rust, yellow, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go through and do um, the first layer of it, which would just be um, the black and the brown. That's going to in essence give us our shadow area. And then I'll go back through right afterwards with uh, rust, yellow, and white in a kind of a chaotic fashion to put little um, loose light pieces on it. So I'm going to put brown and black on my brush at the same time and you're just going to find the tippy top of your ear of corn and just make yourself a whole bunch of little squiggly marks that come out of the top of it. They don't have to be anything perfect, just some squiggles. <laughs> and I'm gonna do that to all of them. Just, oops, I got a little green on my brush there. Um, you just want them to come out in seemingly a um, smart direction. So if your piece of corn is um, angled this way, have them coming out that way. And you don't want them to like shoot out like it's a, you know, 1982 huge, you know, hair or anything or a volcano, just little squiggles coming out the end will will suffice. They don't have to um, be 9,000. Some can be longer. They can, you know, go over each other if you want them to. But again, the bigger corns are going to get a, a taller squiggle. The smaller corns are going to get a littler squiggle. So just make them kind of size appropriate for each ear that you have. And you might not totally see all of them because you're on top of something else that is dark or light, but just go with it. Don't, don't worry about whether or not you can totally see it because that's what nature would do too. You might not see the whole whole thing based on if it was in the shadow or not in the shadow. Um, but again, I'm still just using brown and black, giving myself some little squigglies coming out the tippy top of my ear of corn. And then I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to use rust yellow and white. And I'm going to use them at the same time on my brush. So that way I get an assortment of the colors from it and it's going to be just some nice little highlights. So I've got it here. Um, and when you do it, you don't have to do it on top of every single dark one that you did. Just think of these as additional pieces. You don't have to think of them as just like a little, um, the highlight of that one dark piece. So I'm just going to kind of squiggle in a little bit and through here. Maybe I use a little bit more yellow just to make it more authentic. And then I'm just going to do the same thing over here. And I'm really not doing a whole lot. I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, keeping it true to, to what I'm painting. So I, I want to have those little squigglies coming out the top. And, you know, if you do it too bright or too dark, you can always adjust it now or later, but we will be, um, they'll look better when we lighten up the actual ear of the corn. So I don't want you to feel alarmed right now if they're super bright and it's like, oh no, it doesn't look natural. Just give it a minute. Wait until we've got the other um, details on and then if you need to adjust it any more after that then you can certainly go ahead but right now I would just kind of go with it get those little squiggle marks on there um, and I'm really using a loose kind of um, brush stroke and just kind of making sure I've got little bits of these highlights in through here and then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step so once you've got your little silk coming out the top of your ears of corn. You can wash and dry this same brush and just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our ears of the corn. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are green, rust, yellow, and white. 
and maybe some brown and maybe some black. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, so for me when I think of an ear of corn towards the tail end of the season, it's like it started as green and it's prime and it's turning into like this yellowy brownish color as it's going late in the season. So that's the color that I'm gonna be going for. And I want it to be lighter on the side where the sun is. So I'm gonna be using my yellow and green and maybe a little white on the highlighted side and then as I transition down into the darker side that's where I'm going to go brown to black but my green here is super duper green and I don't want it to be that green so I'm actually this is where my rust is going to come into play I'm actually going to take a little bit of my rust and blend it in with my green so it's a really earthy kind of dirty green. I don't want it to go all the way brown, but I definitely want it to be like a dirty earthy green, <laughs> like a forest green, but not that dark. Um, so you can, so, and green and red make brown. So this rust has a little bit of that reddish hue to it. So by mixing it in with our green, we're gonna get this nice warm, dirty green. So that's gonna be probably the dominant color of the corn stalks, um, or the corn, the ears of corn, sorry. Um, but again, I want it highlighted on the side of the sun and dark down in the corner. So when you're doing these, they can be very stripy because if you've ever um, bought an ear of corn that you had to husk, that the husk is really just single pieces of, um, of something, <laughs> of the outside of the corn. But when you peel it, there's layers to it. So it can look kind of stripy. So don't worry if yours ends up looking uh, stripy. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start with my dirty green color and I'm gonna just kind of paint it on there. And some are gonna be lighter than others because you have a lighter or a darker base. Whatever happens is okay. And then once I've got it on there, I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm using a very thin layer of paint. Then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a touch of yellow and white, which is gonna give me a little bit of a highlight over on the side where the sun is. And then I'm just gonna kind of wiggle my brush a little bit so it blends in. And then as I come over towards this left side, that's when I'm gonna start picking up a little bit of brown and if it doesn't go dark enough into that corner then I can pick up a little bit of black as well so you use your best judgment on how dark your shadowy area needs to go maybe yours needs to go darker than mine or lighter than mine it's totally up to you the severity you could even if you wanted it to really really read as being in the shadow you could add a little bit of black onto that far side like almost an outline onto the far side of that ear of corn and that'll really make it read as being in the shadow. So I'm just gonna repeat that for all of them. So I'm gonna, again, start with my green. So I've got my green on here, and I suppose you could just paint them all green and then um, come in with the highlight and shadow, but I like working with it as it's um, as the paint is still wet. That, um, that allows me to blend it a little bit more naturally. So I just added my little bit of a highlight in through there. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up a little bit of the brown and the black just to get this little bit of a shadow in through um, the darker side of my ear of corn. And we'll be adding a little bit of a highlight onto those leaves that are surrounding it so that'll make them pop out as well. And then I'm going right on to my next one. So just adding my green on through here. And again, you could, you know, work them all green first. It does, you know, whatever is working for you is totally fine. If your paint is too wet, sometimes it might, you might, you know, like it better to let it dry and then add those other um, tones to it. So my sun is over here so that's where I'm shifting this highlight to so I'm just adding a little bit 
of yellow and white over on this highlighted side and then I'm just gently kind of blending it in with the um, the rest of the ear of corn and then I will add my shadow with brown and black my shadow is going to be down here because this is the farthest oops oops it's nice when the instructor says oops isn't it but I just added a new leaf into my field of of um, corn husks so I'm just going to add this little bit of black and brown down here and again if you want it to be a little stripey just pull up some of those little marks you could even for the highlight just want to give you the idea or the um, look of it being a little bit more stripey you can pull the highlight down into it that's going to make it look a little bit more um, stripey so if you're going for that and you really want to um, give those realistic little um, uh, it, it, details you can certainly add little streaks of the highlight and little streaks of the shadow so again I just picked up my green doing a nice layer of green this one's this one's a big one and once I've got that green on there it's kind of like you do in your wash rinse and repeat rinse and repeat so we're painting and repeating painting and repeating um, but it's a fun it's a fun thing because you can really just kind of get into the groove and have your have your rhythm in your system so now I'm going in for my highlight my yellow and white is going to be closest to my Sun so I've got my yellow and white on here and now I'm just going to kind of pull it and give it a little bit of this stripey look and again, you could have your highlight really vibrant. Maybe yours is more subtle than mine. Totally up to you. I'm going to pick up some brown and black now. And I am wiping my brush on my paper towel in between um, when I go from that highlight to the shadowy color. So just know that I am definitely doing that. I think I'm going to add a little bit more darkness over here on the right side so it really reads as being in that shadow there. And again, you can really have yours as um, subtle or as severe as you want it, but I want mine to tell quite the story here. Um, so I'm going to pick up some of my uh, green again. And I say that I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel because I'm using such a small brush. I don't really need to wash it after every um, use, but if you find, you know, you can't wipe off the black, before you go to the green, it's not wiping off enough, then you can certainly wash and dry your brush. I don't want to prevent you from doing that. Um, so I did my green, I wiped my brush off on my paper towel, now I'm going yellow and white, finding where my sun is. That's where my highlight is gonna be um, pointing to. And then I can just pull some little some little streaks down to make it look like it's got those little pieces of the husk wiping my brush picking up some brown and black finding where my darkest side is going to be and that's going to be over here and again i'm not using much paint on my brush especially when it comes to um, the darker side so that way i can just manipulate the paint and make it go where i want it to go instead of it over powering me and not allowing me to to control it i'm gonna go up here picking up some green i did wipe my brush off on my paper towel just getting this whole layer on here these are these are coming out pretty good i'm digging them the um, green is a really nice neutral natural green to me so i'm digging the way that these are coming out so wipe my brush off on my paper towel pick up some yellow and white get my little highlight going in here. Maybe this one's got a good one on the side because it's really turned towards that, um, that sun a little bit. And then I'm just gonna kind of get this to blend in a little bit. And then maybe I'm gonna give myself a couple of little stripes going down into that ear of corn, something like this. And then I'm gonna do my, my shadow. So I gotta put some brown and black on my brush and get my little shadow over on this right side, the side that is away from the sun. And then I got one more ear to go, and then we will be switching to, we're gonna switch to our medium brush after we get this step done. So I've got 
this one last tiny bit, tiny, tiny little ear of corn. He's like, don't forget about me. And he's got a touch of a highlight on the side of the sun. So this one's going to be sideways like this. It might not even have a lot because maybe this, um, this leaf is in the way. But so I'll just put a tiny bit at the top in through here. And that's the, you know, that's the thing that they don't all have to have the same intensity of a highlight or a shadow because you might not be seeing it as much based on, you know, if there's something in the way or not. And then we're going to be switching brushes to that medium brush. So once you've got your ears of corn all nice and painted, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding our final highlights to all of our vegetation. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are white, yellow, rust, brown, and green. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to consider kind of two separate areas, but I'm gonna do it in a fast, flitty kind of way. So that's why we're gonna do it all in one step. So the back stuff, the stuff that's kind of behind these in focus um, corn stalks themselves, I'm going to be using more of a lighter, um, like a sun risey kind of color. So I'm going to be actually mixing white with a touch of orange or a touch of yellow and a touch of the rust. So it's almost like this light orangey kind of color. Um, this will be my highlight color. I don't want it to just be light yellow. I almost want it to be like a combination of all those colors in the sky have just decided that they're going to highlight all these little pieces of um, vegetation that are off in the distance. You don't want it too white, white, white. Um, so that's why I'm kind of tweaking it so it is a just a nice light color but not super duper white. And then what I'm going to do is this is going to be my highlight for most of this stuff up and through here. And as I get in through this area, I can take my brush and just kind of put in little streaks of highlights in between and that's going to tell the viewer that the stuff that's off in the distance is being highlighted also. Um, and then as I move towards this closer area that's kind of in the shadows but still needs a little bit of a highlight, that's when I'm going to be going more into my brown and my green. The, um, the green and the brown are going to be more for those leaves that are coming off of the individual corn stalks, but you can really have as much fun as you want with it. I am going to go fast when I do this, but in my head, my head tells me the highlight is coming from the sun. So that's where my brush is going to be kind of um, leaning towards on these pieces. So I'm going to start up at the top with these little fluffy pieces and I'm not going to do much. I'm just going to kind of dot, dot, dot. This is actually, I think, a little bit too dark. Um, I think I might do a, a touch of a lighter version as I go down and through here because I'm noticing you can't really see the difference in through um, this area. So I'll utilize it up here in the darker areas. And then as I move towards that center, I think I'm going to make a little bit lighter of a tone. But I'm going to just kind of hardly touch my canvas at all as I'm making some little bits of highlights on some of these um, pieces in through here and you don't have to do much once it's on this um, dark if you've got some darkness behind it you don't have to touch every single piece maybe you even touch a little bit of your spider web in through here you can certainly um, modify that color all you want. You Maybe you want yours a little bit more yellow or a little on the lighter side. You just have fun. And then as I get in towards this interior, that's where I'm going to just kind of add these little, these little dabs of brightness in through here. I'll hit those, um, those bigger corn stalks in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of adding bits of these highlights on um, these exterior 
off in the distance kind of pieces. And again, it doesn't have to be on every single piece. You just really wanna make sure that you've got some kind of highlight. I don't wanna overdo it. I, I want this to be a, a nice, subtle, you know, gentle kind of morning where nothing is too invasive, but it still, you know, reads as having some good dimension to it. I did wanna add a little bit lighter tone here, so I just made a, a touch a little bit lighter. And again, I don't wanna overdo it, so I'm just kind of taking my time here and being kind of cautious as to how much of this highlight I'm doing. I do wanna, I'm gonna put quite a bit down here in this um, little area here as if these really have been have been kissed by that morning sunshine. And if you do too much, just pick up some of the original rust or brown and you can certainly add that back in there. Or you could even use your small brush. I suppose if um, you want tinier pieces, you could certainly break out your small brush and just kind of add these little, these little bits of highlights and stuff in through here. Now I'm gonna start going into um, my green and my brown. I'm not gonna wash my brush because I want this to kind of be a little bit lighter here and then move darker as it goes through there. So I've got green and brown on my brush and I'm just really gonna ever so gently just kind of touch it on some of these leaves and it doesn't have to be the whole leaf. Maybe it's just a little piece of the leaf um, and maybe you want more brown, maybe you want it going up the stalk a little bit. So really just have fun with how this is looking. Maybe you want yours more you know, intense than I'm doing and you want yours to read as you know, more, it's almost, almost totally light out right now. Um, so you can really just have fun with, with how um, bright or dark you want these. Now that I've got it kind of brighter on that interior, I am gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel to pick up more of the brown, green, and maybe a little rust as I get towards these um, darker areas over here, just so it stays moving darker into those shadows. I'm putting a little bit of highlight on my leaves that we've um, that we created earlier around those husks. And I know that as I'm painting on top of um, black it's gonna be pretty bright when it's wet but it will get a little bit darker as it dries so if it's pretty intense and a little bit too bright for you right now just let it dry for a minute because you'll it will turn darker as it's when it dries so just you know don't be alarmed initially let it dry for a minute and then if you do need to darken it after that feel free to do so and that I think is going to, huh, I think I think I'm digging it. Um, so I'm I might I might call it. I think I might do one or two more little pieces in through here. Um, but we do have one tiny step to go, and that's going to be um, with your small brush. So once you've got all of your highlights onto your vegetation, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup. Mm. I like it. And take out your small brush and get ready for the final step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna sign mine. I usually sign bottom left, bottom right. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I'm gonna use black paint. I am gonna sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with whatever you want. You could sign yours with the date or your first name. I can't even see my signature, so I'm pulling in a little green here. Um, so I went green and black, and that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you created yourself a beautiful harvest masterpiece, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.